at you with the glasses. And I got bangs. Isn't that awesome? And bangs. I know. Wow. Different. Look what happens when you leave. How's it going in Spain? It's going. Definitely tell you uh, Spain is on a different time frame than we are. We're go, go, go. And they're uh, coffee break, coffee break, coffee break. But it's, it's going. It's going. Are you going to finish? There's a slight possibility that we won't. It's more than slight. There's a there's a pretty good chance we won't. We've had delay after delay after delay, and then there were some more delays, and then oh, then there were some delays. So yeah, no, we probably won't finish. We're gonna have to come back. We're about five delays behind. Oh, cool. So what's up? Well, we'll get into it, but first, do you want to address the audience? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey everybody, it's Brian from Team Aquascape. They pond this waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Yeah, so I'm currently back in Valencia, Spain. You guys remember I was here about a year ago with Jack from Atlantis Water Gardens. We were out here tagging boulders for what is about to be one of the most epic projects we've ever built. And when I say epic, I mean truly epic. There's giant stone bridges. There's one of the coolest stepping stone pathways through a wetland I've ever done before. The design is cool with overhanging decks, et cetera, et cetera. You guys, have to check this one out. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe, make sure you tell all of your friends to subscribe because this is a must see vlog. Okay, I'm done. All What's right, up? so we have a problem. You and Chris, problem. I know we always have problems. Uh, you and Chris are in Spain. Jack P decided to take a little road trip for a couple weeks, so he's gone. So we have no content creators here at all, and we're short of video. So I need your help. Um, so what's everybody else doing? Like Chris and I do most of vlogging, but there are other people that work for her. Well, they're cleaning the shop, getting the sandbox ready. So I'm not sure really what we can vlog in that. Uh, how are shutdowns going? Are you guys uh, all wrapped up with shutdowns? Well, we have a couple left. Why don't you have uh, some of those guys go film a shutdown? I don't think any of our viewers have actually seen how we do a winter shutdown before. With the current weather out there and everything else, I'm sure Sure, they'll find it interesting. Okay. Well, I could talk to Chris Z and have him go film it. That's perfect. Bring Chris and, and anybody else that could help him. But I know our viewers would love to see a winter shutdown. It's educational and it's necessary. It's something we do for a big part of our season. So if we can get that in there, that'd be perfect. Awesome. Easy problem solved. Problem solved. I'm a genius. You're a genius. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Hey Chris, how's it going? Good man, how about yourself? I, I'm doing good over here. <laughs> yeah, where are you? Arizona. <laughs> You're in Arizona right now? Yeah, literally right by uh, California and the Mexico border. Very nice. Hey, well, I'm sorry to bother you on your vacation, man. Yeah, man, this better be good. What's what's going on? So Amanda tasked me on making a video on a shutdown. I'm calling you because, I mean, I don't know where to start and I, I've never done this before, so you gotta help me out. Hey Chris, there's three simple things you gotta worry about. Instead of me explaining how everything is, why don't you pull Roy out and he can uh, show you how to do everything because he's always done these before and he could show you how to do those shutdowns. All right, I can do that. No problem. Yeah, man. It's super easy. Go out there and Royal explain everything for you. You have nothing to worry about. It's super simple. You got this. By any chance, do you know what house you're going to? No idea. That's why I was asking you. There is a pond that we did out in Helmers Chris did uh, back in the middle of summer. Actually, with the video that you guys just watched on Tuesday, we kind of lost some of the footage on that video. And so I think it'd be really cool for the viewers to kind of see how to wrap up that pond and show how we shut that feature down is to kind of see this pond up in action what the shutdowns involved and kind of cool especially with that build so i think it'd be really cool to kind of do a full circle of tuesday morning when they didn't see it to thursday getting shut down all right sounds good hey i know exactly where you've been at with filming for the first time and doing the shutdown for the first time you got this it, it'll be a little nerve-wracking in the beginning but you you'll be have this by the end of the day all right man thank you have a good vacation thanks man What's up everybody, it's Chris Zeschke from Team Aquascape. Let's go to the pond. Alright everybody, 
we just got out here. Roy here with me. Hi guys. All right, so break it down into the three steps and how to maintain yeah, it. Yeah, so you can see right now, this pond here has a net over it. So the very first step, obviously that we have to do is remove this net. It's in two sections because it's separated by a bridge, but we have to remove the net before we can go on to the next two steps. So there you go. Well, it may be frozen. can see the ice frozen on the rock and the, the neck got stuck on there so Roy had to grab the shovel and pry it out of there. Typically, we ran into a little snafu here. Ice was a little bit thicker than we anticipated, which is making it very hard to remove the net completely intact. You never wanna wait this far ahead in the winter to remove a net. So what we're gonna do is carefully remove the netting as best as we can. And then this area where it's got the majority of the leaves and so forth, we're gonna try to pull the ice off and pull it up as one sheet without having the net tear because you don't want all these leaves going back in the pond. Step one is done. We got the netting out. It wasn't as easy as we thought it would be because it was stuck with a bunch of ice on it. Now we're on to step number two, which exactly. is removing components. So with the net being removed, we are going to remove the components in the skimmer, which involves the pump itself with the check valve, the ion gen, and the auto dose system. After that's been removed, we will move to step number three. The iron gem is tied around the check valve, so we'll remove that. So, as you can see on the iron gen, the probes are fairly thick and it doesn't have a lot of wear. So, when the probes are nice and thick and rectangular like that, it's still good for literally another year. When the probes become very skinny, like popsicle sticks, that's the point where you want to replace the iron gen. has been removed from the skimmer. You can see all the water that's in the biofall on the top flushing out. You wanna make sure this is open so it doesn't overflow. There we go. And the big advantage with these new skimmers is the doors allow, will allow it to lock itself by snapping it in place, which is a huge benefit so that the fish in the winter don't accidentally swim in there and end up dying, which has happened very frequently in the past on some of the other skimmers. So awesome upgrade product team. And then here we also have a autofill. Uh, so this actually is designed to maintain the water level in the pond. This is an additional part of the feature that we want to shut down. And so where this is connected to the spigot, it needs to be disconnected. So that's an uh, additional step right there. Right, 
this. So this is gonna be stored in his garage. Ideally, you wanna put this in a bucket of water, submerged to keep the seals moist during the winter season, and then it'll be ready for the spring. The receiver obviously needs not to be put in water, just kept inside. Okay, so earlier you saw that the autofill float was in the skimmer there, and that needed to be removed from the main water source, which you can see here it is now. So this has been unscrewed from the spigot, and this way we won't have to worry about the tubing of the autofill cracking or breaking during the winter because due to having water in it. All right, guys, on to part three. Roy, what do we got here? All right, so now that the pond is 50% free of ice because we removed a good chunk of it, this is an ideal time to place the deicer and the aerator in the pond where we want it specifically. Here's our Aquascape deicer. New for this year and I believe last year is this little tab here that allows us to put a rope or string so that we can position the deicer specifically where we want it and it doesn't recoil back due to the cord getting cold and kind of recoiling itself. So, so you're gonna do that. We're good there. It's tied on, secured. I would put it on the other side of that rock. Right. Or no, yeah, just to keep it more centered. The icer's working. All right, Roy, looks like we're all done with the uh... Winter pond shut down. Yes, we are. Got all three steps done, took the net off, got all the leaves out. Second step was to take out all the components. We took out all the iron gen, the auto dose, and the pump. And then step three is we installed the de-icer and the aerator. And now this pond is ready for the winter and it should have no issues. All right, see you guys later. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs>